If you are going to buy a new car and you are going to put a deposit down to buy that new car, you need to watch this video. Dad, over on the community forum, we had D post this story of woe. The title was Dealer Refused to Give Me Refundable Deposit Back. I was going to read this to you and get your reaction. and Maybe you can give us some advice. How's that sound? Absolutely. Sounds good to me. All right. That sounds like it might be your day job. All right. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. So I posted how I was able to buy a new Toyota Tundra that's over in the Success Stories channel. Congrats, D. This process yeah. was very long, and it started last July. I searched many dealerships because they were all charging above MSRP, which I refused to pay. Pops, give him a quick little Ray Shevska stamp of approval for that. Yeah. I yep. ended up at Toyota of Wallingford in Connecticut and spoke to a salesman, and after a lengthy conversation, he agreed to drop their $5,000 market adjustment and charge MSRP, which I took as a win. That, that's mm -hmm. good. I left a $1,000 deposit to put me on a waiting list. I asked several times if the deposit was refundable, and the salesman said yes for any reason or at any time. I asked to get it in writing, and he said we didn't need to. It's their policy. They don't do non-refundable. Your spidey senses are already going off. Well, uh, why wouldn't you put it in writing? <laughs> uh, I mean, if your policy is... Um, that uh, a deposit is refundable for any reason or at any time, well then, because that's just your policy, why wouldn't you put that in writing to state, here's our policy when it comes to deposits for incoming vehicles? And to be clear, with like Toyota, for example, you can't factory order, but they have an allocation system. So this is really common. I mean, probably a million yes. people this year will experience this with Toyota and other brands. Yes. So it is important to understand this. All right. I asked again, right? And he said, we don't do that. Didn't need to. It's their policy. They don't do non-refundable. This was my mistake. I should have pushed for it in writing. I know I disappointed Ray, but I did put it on a credit card just in case. A truck that I kind of matched, uh, that kind of matched what I wanted came in November, but the price just didn't work out. We were too far apart on price and trade. And I backed out of that deal and waited some time. In January, I had a lead on another truck elsewhere. I called Wallingford and asked for my deposit back which he suddenly began working harder trying to find me a truck. Interesting how that happens, right, Pops? Yes. He then found a truck Maybe. they were getting in a few months that matched something I'd like. I figured I'd keep both options open until they came in and I negotiated. Fast forward to this week, I ended up making a deal at the other dealership. I called to get my refund, but the salesman wasn't there. I spoke to a manager and was polite and explained what happened and I'd like my deposit. The manager took a turn and became pretty nasty and aggressive, telling me they did a lot of work and my name was attached to a truck, so it's non-refundable. Then he pulled the, quote, I'm the highest manager and nobody else to talk to. I hung up and tried the next day to speak to the salesman. Well, that didn't go well either. He replied to a text that they did all this work finding and getting me vehicles and they weren't refunding me. Thoughts so far, Pops? Yeah, that's why uh, stuff should be in writing. This yeah. is why we have a... I, yeah. And, and I was going to say, Zach, I don't care how much work the dealership did. If they didn't have a truck, if the truck wasn't there, um, it doesn't matter. No need to get nasty. Yeah. Just refund the money. Okay, Pops, getting your extended warranty from Car Edge, what do you need to know? You're getting the same warranty you get at any dealer just for a lot less. CarEdge.com slash warranty. Pops, I... I think you'll be proud of this. We've started piloting our Car Edge Concierge program, and we're helping about 10 people a month on it. We've already refunded people. We've already, and they yeah. put a $500 deposit down, down, dollar deposit down, dad. And within yes. a couple of weeks, if they're thinking to themselves, you know what, I don't really want to do this. We just refund them. No questions asked. Yeah. Like, that's just the what you do. Be. That's just what you do. Yes. Like, they didn't yeah. get any value out of it. Okay, did we put work into it? Yeah. You just move on. Anyway, let's keep uh, let's keep going here. At this point, uh, gloves are off. Now it's about money and morals and principle. I sent a message back saying Toyota works on allocations, so no vehicle was ordered for me. That's accurate. They were getting yes. those trucks regardless, and I signed nothing agreeing to take any of them. I also mentioned how he said it was refundable for any reason at any time, followed up with saying I'm not the average consumer. I'd file in small claims court and sue the salesman, manager, and dealership civilly for damages. I'd also leave reviews everywhere on social media and the internet. Or a quick solution is refund and we can go on our ways and try and salvage a professional relationship for the future as this was the closest dealership to my house and I'd probably use them for service. 
it was very clear this was about how they felt wronged because they put together deals for me and I didn't take the vehicles. I explained this was a business decision and as a consumer, I have a right to go anywhere with my business, wherever the better deal is. He seemed to calm down and said he would work on it on Monday. He also tried to start negotiating money off one of their trucks, but I was already taking my business elsewhere. But I had an ace in the pocket. I called the credit card company and filed a dispute. I mentioned it was a verbal agreement. The deposit was refundable, but there was also nothing I, I signed stating it wasn't. Credit card company uh, credited my account instantly while they do their thing. What I've learned, all caps, get everything in writing and signed off. Also a credit card, if you feel any uncertainty, can be clutch. All right, Pops, what do we, what's the uh, moral of the story here? What do we need to know? The moral of the story always has been and always will be, get any promises in writing. If it's not in writing, it becomes a he said, he said. So who's to believe who? Uh, you know, if you if you went to court, the customer could be lying or the salesperson could be lying. Uh, the way to avoid that is to always get these type of things put into writing. Um, it. Toyota works on an allocation system. Either the dealership was allocated a truck that would match what the customer wanted, or they weren't. They could request it through their allocation. But there's no reason, and there should be no store policy that states, well, we don't put our refund policy in writing. Okay, that, that, just, that just opens up a huge can of worms that doesn't need to ever be opened. And more importantly for the dealership, why piss off a future potential customer for $1,000? Because you put some work in it. That's your job. Your job is to put work into it. And sometimes as a salesperson, you put in work. You spend <laughs> hours with a consumer. You show them cars. These you are crazy concepts. Their car. Yeah. And, and in 75% of the cases, you don't sell them a car. Okay. So a good salesman, if they're closing at 25%, means 75% of the time they're putting in work and getting nothing for it. This, my friends, is no different. So, just because the dealership put in work doesn't mean that you have to pay for that work, okay? They know that 75, 70 to 75% of their customers that walk in ain't buying anything. Yeah. It's just the way the business operates. So always get things in writing. Never just settle for verbal agreements. Written agreements uh, certainly make disputes like this so much easier. Friendly reminder, go watch. It's for it's labeled for 2022, but it, the principles still apply. How to factory order. Because again, you're not factory ordering. You're, it's allocation. Same principles apply here yes. in 2023. Get a signed document that says what the out-the-door price will be on the RO for the PDI. No add-ons, no extras. Like, there's 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 lingo, there's language, there's tactics you should use, and and obviously D, one of our community members who ended up getting a good deal, very proud of D, mm -hmm. and also obviously got their money back through the credit card dispute, you know, maybe maybe before they agreed, just watch that video one more time. You know, it, it is what it is. It's helpful, but it's yeah. a good reminder to the millions of people who are likely going to be in a situation like this during the year, Dad to not follow in Dee's footsteps and instead do what you're saying, get something in writing and everyone wins in this context. This is not a car edge bashes car dealer video. This is literally just everyone yeah. wins. Everyone wins. Yep. This way everybody can go home happy. <laughs>